Boy. Exquisite Boy. What an exquisite boy. Chapter 1. Yes, it's true. I was the baby on the cover of Paul Reiser's Babyhood. Thanks to my reverse Alzheimer's, the earliest snipshots of my life come beaming into my brain pan in crystalline 4K Ultra HD. In fact, to show off their line of incredible televisions, Best Buy often plays my sweet baby times for customers to gawk and gop at, and they sell many expensive sets each day. But do I see a shekel? Never. With such astonishing clarity for my beginning years comes a sad fuzziness as I ease into middle age. I find myself knocking over vases and potted plants, and wriggling my body towards the freeway, praying for the red god Mario to scoop me up in his cart and take me back to my hot shower. But I rest easy underneath the 110 North, knowing that once I enter the winter phase of my life, I'll remember everything clearly once more, every freeway, every cart, as if it was yesterday. I should probably scream out all my memoirs right now just in case I don't make it home. Let's begin with yelping about my fabulous baby days. I was blessed with a succulent physique for a baby. My rounded kneecaps were the envy of the McDonald's playpen ball pit, and my fat rolls scalloped over my midsection like a baker's bounty of fresh bread loaves. My lumps thrilled and chilled, and it is for this reason that I quickly enrolled into the ruthless, cocaine-ravaged world of baby modeling. My theory was... May as well make a quick buck off these suckers while my body was in its astonishing prime. Word around town had it that Paul Reiser, the reclusive maestro behind NBC's flagship program Mad About You, was squirreled away in his Manhattan loft, hard at work realizing his greatest vision yet, a genre-defining tome known as Babyhood. Previous rumored titles were A Brief History of Bubble and Britches and American Goo. Not much more was apparent about this next masterwork except that he desperately needed a baby for his cover and was running out of time before he had to deliver the manuscript to his publisher. I need a meeting with Riser yesterday, Angela. I barked into my cool toy phone that would roll its eyes and play a tune if you dragged it around the choo-choo train patterned carpet. He's Picasso, and I'm a canvas. We need to paint. Think you can do your job for once and score me a meet and greet? You terrify me, speaking baby, stammered my agent on the other end of the line. It is unnatural and unclean what you do. When you breathe words, it is as if God has left the room. Be gone with your foul witchcraft and tell the devil to unclutch my soul from his devious bosom. Great work, babe. And tell Riser I want 10% of the sales. These kneecaps don't come for free. Have a Power Wheels come pick me up in the morning, but not the morning morning because this baby's got to rise before he can shine. Catch my breeze? She screamed and hung up whilst I posed in front of the mirror, flexing my knees. This job was mine. I could taste it. I puttered my jet-black Cobra Commander power wheels into the open barn door of Riser's stunningly appointed artist's loft space. Candlewicks melted aggressively from the spouts of long, empty wine bottles. Research and published scientific papers, most of them Riser's, were strewn about the floor. Vitruvian-esque sketches of babies littered the walls like a serial killer's man cave. It was a heady, intoxicating stew of genius. And I was at first intimidated, I must admit. Then I realized I had no right to quiver in my power wheels. I was at the top of my field for a reason. I had all the right lumps in all the right places. I could babble and bubble with the rest of those baby boys. Nobody broiled up a britches brew like Brian the Buttery Babe. If I sputtered out of there without taking a chance in my body, I would never forgive myself. So I scooted my wheels over to Riser's workbench and cleared my throat. <clears throat> Your search is over, I declared. I am the uberkind, the one who toddles above all others. Gaze upon my billowing doe, observe my feather soft digits, and cheeks as rotund as the rolling hills of Glendale. My unrumpled rump pumps many a dump. But for you, I come toddling clean as a daisy, dear Riser. Together, we can achieve something beautiful. Together, we can transcend and achieve everlasting notoriety in the form of cosmically ordained art craft. I am thy clay. Do with me as you please. Up until now, Paul hadn't given me the time of day. His lips pursed in anguish. As he poured over his work, he absentmindedly ran his ink-stained hands through the curly tufts of his mane. But it was my mention of clay that pricked his ears, for I knew that despite his astrophysics degree, despite his work in oils and pastels that hung in the MoMA, and despite his illustrious perch at the top of the publishing world, Paul was really a sculptor at heart. Clay, 
he grumbled weakly. I could sense the mighty wheels in his mind beginning to turn. He gave me a once-over that quickly turned into a thrice-over. Soon, <laughs> he was so transfixed by my commanding kneecaps that he absent-mindedly let his quill drip fresh ink over his work scrolls. I had to suppress a laugh at what my body had accomplished. The thrill of creation gripped him intensely. We will work quickly, infant, he intoned gravely. I have no time for chum scrubbers or dilettantes. I brook no guff from empty vessels. When we create, we create together. Come, into my studio. And so we dove into the work. Riser was a dream come true. At last I had the chance to craft with a master at the peak of his creative powers. It elevated my work to a new level as we devised shoot after shoot, his camera snapping away, my poses growing more and more electrifying. The dynamism, the movement, the emotion, the flow. We weren't just building a portfolio of book covers. We were changing the face of baby modeling forever. It is true what they say of Paul, in hushed whispers at the French galas and in the smoke-filled back rooms of the New York art schools. He is fast, demanding, and intolerant of buffoonery. But for a dazzling young apprentice like myself, it was just the tonic for a promising career that could not blossom any further under the tutelage of disinterested hacks. He coaxed me with his long, languid descriptions of his upcoming novels, themes, and theses, man's quest for immortality in the eyes of his children, enticing me to embody the twin spirits of death and life that soaked his manuscript. I stretched and played, loped and frolicked in the sunlight of creation. Before we knew it, our session was coming to an end. Paul furrowed his brow and tapped his temple. There was so much we had accomplished in those brief twelve hours, but both he and I could tell that work as staggering as babyhood demanded a photo cover that cracked the sky, that met the face of God and found him wanting. We could settle for no less. That much was evident in the electric dance of thought behind our eyes. Then it hit me. What does man want out of his children but the secret to everlasting youth? Is this not the underlying text in Riser's manuscript? Is it not the very obsession laid bare in a king's garden full of monuments to himself? What if, I wondered, what if, over a near-finished tumbler of brandy, I spoke thus to Paul. Perhaps on the cover, I am tugging at your ear, Riser, as you gaze forward, as if I contain the key to end your misery, the elixir to freeze your decay. But you shan't listen, your eyes are fixed on the horizon for answers that will never come. And so the timeless tragedy of man plays on, the children desiring to lead the way, to show you the light, as the adults trudge forward into the dark. Immediately he wept. The student had become the master. Tears gushed from his face as he knew the truth of my genius had finally flowered. It was a genuine riser geyser. It was the last image we shot for the day, and we got it in one take. By then the brandy was gone, the candles had burned out, and the night bustle of the city paused to greet the dark blue creep of the morning. I left riser's chateau with a buzz in my blood, the backs of my eyes coarse with focus, the folds in my brain crackling with adrenaline. My life as a baby model unfurled before me in a seemingly infinite chasm of promise and power. As time passed, Riser's esteem gradually fell from the peak of the New York literati. He retreated further into his work, continually honing and crafting, never unveiling his most treasured projects. Perhaps what those snickering critics insinuated was true. Riser had topped himself with babyhood, and spent the rest of his days toiling in the shadow of his masterpiece. He turned to the wine and the women to soothe his writer's block. The paparazzi would glimpse him jet-setting to the winding steps of Rome or deep-diving in Belize. Was he exploring the depths of his poet's soul, or was he merely running? We never worked together again. I myself grew out of the industry, which was just as well. My interests would soon turn to filmmaking, journalism, and basketball, all of which I would master in one way or another. And besides... What more was there to achieve? Not even landing the Nirvana album cover would have topped what Riser and I achieved in that dusk-lit studio on a hot summer's night. It was a dance with Kismet, an illicit tryst with the fates. I followed my heart elsewhere.